Welcome back, everybody. If you're new, my name's Nicholas, and this is Investing Against the Grain. In today's episode, we are going to discuss why Ford might be in really big trouble with their pursuit for electrification. But before we get into that, check out this interview I did with Farzad. You can find the link right here. We had a wonderful discussion of over two hours. We talked about financial independence. We talked about Tesla. We talked about Grimes and Lex Friedman. We talked about just a general outlook on life. So it was a very good conversation, honestly. Uh, to quote Farzad, you know, the discussion needs to continue because there's a lot of meat that we left on the bone of those discussions. And hopefully we get to do something again sooner than later. All right. With that said, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell. If you guys want to support the channel, you can find my Patreon in the link down below. All right, let's get into it. So to kick things off, let's just talk about the stock market and what we saw today. So I'm just going to share my screen and here we can see my Webull account. So let's take a look what happened. Today, we opened up um, somewhat mixed, okay? So we started off in the day, and we actually had a nice couple green candles. So the market was essentially just continuing the rally that we saw yesterday, or so we thought, because then the worst came, right? Then all of a sudden, we saw everything crash, and I'm sure you guys have seen it all day. You've seen it on the media. Everyone's acting like this is 2008 all over again, like the worst thing in the world, and really, it's not. I mean, to be honest, all we really saw was you know, a little bit of a sell-off compared to what we saw yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we just essentially gave up the gains from yesterday, and then we sold off a little more. So it's kind of a, I, I don't know, to me, it was kind of a nothing burger kind of day just because of the levels that we finished at. Now, I get it. There's a lot of fears out there, and everybody keeps saying, oh, well, yesterday, people digested the information from Jerome Powell, and today they, they realize, oh, no, this is a big issue. But I don't think that's what happened. I think there's other things happening in the greater macro environment. And when I say macro, I mean outside of the U.S. We saw the, the Bank of England, they raised their rates. They have a different outlook. Uh, we saw uh, inflation reports of 6-9% for some countries. We, we see lots of fears of recession in Europe. China might be in a recession. We might be in a recession. Right? There's all this fear that's going on out there about where we are. But honestly, I think this is very healthy. I think it's extreme. we're in a very healthy spot right now, especially going into next week where we'll get core data, core CPI or CPI consumer price index data. And we'll get to see where inflation might really be at for us. Did we peak in April? Are we starting to taper off? Or are things are as bad as everybody feared today and you know we're going to sell off even more? I tend to think that we kind of peaked at, at inflation. I think we're going to see things start to steady off if for no other reason because we're comparing to a higher level from last year. Remember, the CPI reading is a year-over-year -year and a month-over-month -month, uh, reflective metric. So I'm more optimistic uh, about it, and I think today is more so uh, giving up some gains from yesterday. Maybe there's still a little more fear in the market, but it feels like all the fear is kind of starting to wash out. And I think next week we're going to start to see more of the positive news, especially after we get the CPI data. So again, rough day. I get it. It's never fun to have a big sell-off. It's not fun to... To be down what tesla went down what almost 10 percent today maybe a little more it's not fun i get it but it's just one day and we live for the long term we don't really worry too much about these day-to-day -day interactions so hopefully this didn't mess with you too much and if it did hopefully you started your cinco de mayo earlier than than not all right so let's get into this ford news and why i think ford might be in a bit of a trouble when it comes to electrification so Ford came out with the Mustang Mach-E in 2020, December of 2020 to be exact. So we've been able to see how that has progressed from December of 2020 all through 2021. And now we're in 2022 and we're, we can see how things are going, right? How's the ramp going? How are the sales going? How's the production going? So here's the article from Inside EVs. U.S. Ford Mustang Mach-E sales decrease in March 22, but great, <laughs> great headline there, right? So let's take a look at this. Ford, Ford brands sold 151,000 vehicles in March in the U.S., down 25% year over year. And Q1 sales of 412,000 vehicles also down by 16% year over year. Now, you have to understand the context of what's going on, right? I mean, cut Ford a break. I, I know you, you may not want to hear me say that, but all of the, the automakers out there are struggling with supply chains, especially what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, what's happening in China, zero COVID. There's a lot going on, right? So if we attempt to just kind of give some grace about where things are with that, you know, maybe we can see these numbers more for what they are rather than what call it Tesla bias may be. So, 
So already, I'm just gonna go ahead and caveat with that, right? Saying, let's give it a benefit of the doubt. So if I scroll down, I zoom in here. The circumstances are challenging, but the company reports that electrified vehicles sales improve quickly. Again, they're all encompassing here, uh, even you know, plug-in hybrids. Quote, Ford achieved record electrified, electrified vehicle uh, sales year to date, expanding 37.9%. Ford's electrified vehicle conquest rate is growing and climbed to 51%, up six percentage points over last year. Well, that was a lot that really seemed to not make sense. <laughs> right? I, I don't like when they just put out percentages like this. Like, I get why they do it because it makes it sound more impressive. It's like, oh, we grew 50%. Well, is that impressive? What if you only sold one vehicle last year or one vehicle last quarter or last month? And then now you sell two vehicles. Oh, we went up 100%. So I don't know, uh, percentages are funny like that. But the interesting thing here is the vehicle conquest. I thought that was funny as well. Interesting uh, word choice there. Let's continue here. This, this is the main show. Ford Mustang Mach-E. Ford Mustang Mach-E sales in March amounted to 2,363, which is 10.4% less than in March of 2021. So keep in mind, in March of 2021, the vehicle was only uh, alive really some, December is when it launched for 2020. So December, January, February, March, that's four months. Four months it was live. It's the inception of this vehicle. And somehow in a year later, it's down 10% compared to what it was then. Okay, but again, take a step back. Maybe, maybe this really does have to do with the supply chains, Russia, Ukraine, China, as I've been saying. So, so you know, let's not rule out the potential headwinds that were involved in this. That's nearly 1.6% of the total volume. On one hand, it's not good news that sales decrease, but at least the rate, uh, so this was, this is a tongue twister, but at least the rate of decline decrease. So this implies that this isn't the first decline that we've had. So we'll look at a chart in a second and explain that even further. During the first quarter, Ford sold a total of 6,700 34 mach -E's in the U.S. up 1.8% year over year. Okay, so, so that's bullish, right? The gross stock of mach -E's in the U.S. is at about 8,700 at dealerships and in transport, we assume, compared to about 3,500 in February. So, so this is the part where things start getting concerning. They have about 8,700 out there in volume, right? And let's assume that they're at dealerships and let's also assume that they're uh, in, in transport, right? Or get, getting to the dealerships. Yet, Again, coming back up here, they were only able to sell 2,300 vehicles, right? Why is that? I mean, if we compare it to Tesla, and again, I get it. Comparing to Tesla isn't always the most fair comparison. But if you compare it to Tesla, Tesla, the second a car is made, it's already sold, right? They, they don't really have this backlog of production and, and volume. Yet, for some reason, the Mustang Mach-E is starting to build up this, this uh, supply, which on one hand, you might say, oh, great, that's a good problem to have. But is it, is it really a good thing when you see Tesla selling out every single thing, every single vehicle they can make? When you see Tesla, they cannot keep up with demand, right? They, they're production limited. And here we have Ford essentially stockpiling Mustang Mach-E's. That's, that's a potential red flag. And, and that was the first thing that really kind of caught my eye. All right, well, let's take a look at this chart. Ford Mustang Mach-E sales in the U.S. So this is sales, right? Actually, um, or actual customers who have purchased the vehicle. So 2020, we'll ignore this because, like I said, this was actually in December. You can see this little bit right here. I mean, if I zoom in, maybe you can see it. Okay, so you can see a little bit there. Um, but so this really starts, let me make sure you guys can see this. Here we go, we'll, we'll come up here. All right, so this really starts in January. So January 2021, we'll look at this blue first, this lighter blue. And you can see it's, you know, January was a good month. February, man, February was crazy, right? I mean, that's almost, call it almost 4,000 vehicles were sold in February. So that's great. And then we see March decline. We see April decline. We see May, maybe that's a decline. Maybe it's the same. Okay, June ticked up. July ticked up. August, huge decline. September, a little recovery. Okay, October looked good. Oh, November looked good. All right, we're getting back on track. And then December, ooh, that's a decline again. That's not great. And then we start coming over to 2022, the red. And again, year over year, oh my God, this looks great, right? This looks excellent. So yeah, of course, from a percentage perspective, this looks like they killed it. But then you look at February 
and this doesn't look great at all. Again, caveat. Ford might just have supply chain issues. So, you know, completely understandable. Maybe that's why they can't get these sales up. But this is still a rather drastic decline. And we don't see that same decline as much in March. But then again, March is still a decline year over year. So this makes you wonder what's really going on here. April, however, numbers are out. And I will take a look at that in a second. April actually became the record month for the Mustang mach -E sales. Uh, they were 3,805. And we'll take a look at that in a second. But again, this implies that this one was just under 4,000. So, so essentially what's really implying is that we have not had a record month of sales for the Mustang mach -E since the third month it was selling. That is concerning. All right, well, let's, let's uh, continue looking at these charts here. So here is the Ford Mustang Mach-E production. So again, let me make sure you guys see this. So this is all production. So vehicles that were actually made. The first thing, when you look at this chart, right? If I just draw a, a straight line across here, you can see that they never, ever exceed 10,000 vehicles per month. Not, not once. And, and this is the part where I start to get a little concerned because you could make the argument, oh, their supply constrained, Russia, Ukraine, China, all that. But that hasn't really been the case for the entire time the Mustang Mach-E has been up and running. I mean, look, look at this. In 2020, right, when it was first uh, being built, production started before delivery started, right? So October, November, December, this was a great ramp. This is excellent ramp. And then we go into 2021, we see the same thing, right? It still continues to ramp. And then February, we see a tick down. Okay, then we see March tick back up. But then we see April tick back down. Okay, and then we see May and June, those are good. But then from there, we just slowly start this downward line here, right? I mean, you can almost see this is down to the right. Now, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know if this is, I, I almost feel like they're doing this intentionally, not wanting to ramp these up because they might be losing money on every vehicle they sell. But that would lead me to think, okay, wouldn't you want to ramp up even faster? Because the sooner you get the volume production, the better your margins will be, et cetera. So I'm not really sure about this. But then let's go into 2022. 2022, January, February, March. This, this first quarter, right? So we have these numbers. Again, it's it's very marginal improvements, all right? Like quarter over quarter, it's, it's not that impressive at all, actually. And this, again, just makes me think that maybe they don't really care about ramping this up. Maybe they don't care about selling EVs. And so the bigger concern here is that if Ford has these ambitions to go all electric, and this is their first vehicle that they're really selling. I mean, you can, you can look at the transit vehicle, the van, but I, you know, I, I exclude that because I don't really think that's doing much. That's not going to be a game changer. You're not going to see that in mass volume production. But the Ford Mustang Mach-E competes against the likes of a Model Y. And so when you see the Model Y essentially about to become the most popular, best-selling vehicle in the world, and that's what the Mustang Mach-E is competing against, and they can barely produce vehicles. I mean, Tesla essentially does in one month out of China what Ford does in an entire year just for production. Tesla does that in sales almost, right? So these numbers are kind of nutty in a not so good way. But take a look at this as well. Here we see a, a tweet from Mike from Cyber Owners. And he said, something stood out when I read this. April was record month for Mach-E sales, but they only sold less than half of what was in stock. Dealerships had 8,700 inventory, but only sold uh, 3,805. Can you imagine if Tesla only sold half of their inventory or even had an, any unsold inventory? That's a very good point. But so let's let's analyze this and break this down. Ford Mustang Mach-E sales in April reached a new all-time monthly record of 3,805, which is 95% more than a year ago. Uh, again, that's right. Like it's so okay. So you're bragging off of what 1,500, 1,700 vehicles. That's that's it's a very minimal flex, you know, about bragging rights here. But what's more notable? So far this year, Ford delivered 10,539 Mach-E's in the U.S., up 23%. Ford notes that the, that the electric Mustang remains the second best-selling battery electric vehicle in the crossover SUV segment in the U.S. after the Tesla Model Y. I mean, is there really another one? Again, I, I think this is very, 
very weird. But what's more, but what's crazier is that in the first, fir- so this includes April. So, so this is the first quarter plus April. They're at 10,539 vehicles. That's not indicative of a company that's trying to really transition into electric vehicles. This is indicative of a company that is trying to have a me too product and say that they're doing these things and say they're paying attention to this, but they're not really interested in it because they know they make so much more money in this other segment. And I think the same thing is going to happen with the lightning. I know maybe people don't agree with me here. Maybe people think that Ford is serious about the electric truck about getting there, but I think Ford is more interested in being the first one out with a a full size pickup or traditional pickup right it it seems like oh gm came out the hummer well ford needs to come out with something and so they essentially just took the cab of an f-150 slapped it onto a a battery electric uh powertrain and they're calling that good in order to keep up with gm and to be able to get out there before the cyber truck right hence all the the jokes by jim farley about the cyber truck but to me this is real cause for concern right here it also says the gross stock of Mach-E's in the u.s is estimated at 7,000 at dealerships and in transport we assume compared to about 8,700 in the previous month so the point is they do not have demand right if they had real demand these vehicles would all be sold right they would be gone they'd be off the books dealers wouldn't be able to hold on to them so you got to wonder what's happening is it that ford can't move these is it that Ford doesn't really care about building electric vehicles? Maybe it's not a Ford problem. Maybe it is a supply chain problem or a transport problem. Maybe it's a dealership problem. Maybe it's dealership marking up these vehicles. Either way, I think this is worth keeping our eye on because I have a suspicion that a lot of these companies don't really care that much about producing electric vehicles. Or maybe, just another thought, maybe they are realizing how difficult it is And what Tesla has done is truly remarkable. And all these other companies cannot figure out how to do it, how to scale this in an affordable, cost-effective, high-margin way. Maybe that's the problem. But I think time will tell. And I think the launch of the F-150 Lightning will give us great insight into all of this. And I I already think we can see that with GM and the Hummer EV and how abysmal those cells are. But then again, that's a conversation for another time. All right, let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts are. Is this something that strikes you as weird? or just odd, or maybe this makes sense to you. Again, let me know down below in the comments. All right, we're going to leave it there for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, check out my interview with Farzad. You can find it in my Tesla playlist. And with that said, don't forget, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell. I love you all. Peace.